Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, January 23rd, 2020, and this is a week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending today. I tried to get the message out earlier, but as Murphy would have it, right about the time I tried, I fat fingered something and screwed up all of my slides. So I had to start over and drop a few F bombs in the process. So, what are we going to talk about? Eight? Well, st we're still back in 18. We've got to fix that. <laughs> I'm behind my time. Obviously, current market conditions, we'll get into that. Are we in a new bull leg? And that's kind of, that's left over from a couple of months ago. I, I guess the obvious question, or the answer to that question, I should say, is yeah. And your questions on trading, if you don't mind, keep them relative to the slides, just so my ADD doesn't kick in. And when we get to the live charts towards the end of the show, feel free to ask about anything you want. Along those lines, feel free to ask about your favorite stock picks. Wait until we get to the live charts, and I'll tell you when that is. It's We don't have a whole lot to cover this week, so we'll get there pretty quickly. And that's just for your benefit, so I don't overlook them. And then the other thing, too, is ask about one stock at a time and hit return. That way, I know which ones I've covered and which ones I did not. So this week, it's kind of related to this, or it's very much related to this, but it's um, I'm off on a little bit of a tangent this week. And that'll make sense in one second. But my, my ongoing quest, and if I succeed, I'm going to own the world. And even if I do okay, I'm still going to be doing quite well, is to have the short-term trading pay for the long-term trading. And part of that is following the process. And that's something that I've been thinking about a lot lately, is following the process, following the process, following the process. And it's hard, and I don't want to come across like it's super easy to to follow the process because many times it isn't. And then a lot of today's theme is going to be the fact that in order to become more wealthy as a trend trader, and by the way, the only way to make money is to capture a trend, but as to become, or if you are to become more wealthy as a trend trader, you're going to have to spend a lot of time being less wealthy, and that's going to make a lot of sense. And just one second, there's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you lose money trading or as I'll have to sum it up. All predictions about the future and a lot of stuff could happen between now and then. So my ongoing quest, as I've been saying for the last several weeks, is to have that short-term trading pay for the longer-term trading. And some more follow-up this week on free rolling, meaning that you get into position and it pays for itself. You take that money off the table and then you're free rolling on the remainder. And I'm going to flesh that out quite a bit in just one second for those who are new to the methodology. So here's an open, a snapshot of the open portfolio as of last night. Everything that is white has stopped out or hit the initial profit target. So in this case, TSEO has hit the initial profit target. PLMR has hit the initial profit target. PAGS and ping and the ones that are still yellow on both positions are still long by the way and i've covered this quite a bit so i don't want to spend too much time today you can go in and watch other presentations or if you're in the learning management system if you're a member then go in and watch the money management modules because we kind of beat all this to death but what we're doing is we're buying a full position and then we're dividing it two for the spreadsheet purposes we're not actually making two trades so that little trade on the bottom, which is a thousand shares, you would buy a thousand shares per 100K, and that's based on a two point risk. So 2% times a thousand. If you look at the top of this spreadsheet, you can barely see it, but it says 2% 2, uh, 2 and hypothetical 100K portfolio, just to keep the math easy. If you have 200K to trade, then obviously 2,000 shares, but Again, to keep the math easy, $100,000, 2% risk. If stopped out, so that's $2,000 risk. In this particular case, the volatility calls for a two-point stop. And if you go into the money management module, we talk a lot about how to set those stops there. But anyway, and then also I would encourage you, especially if you're a member, to go in and watch the Q&A archives. I'm, I apologize. It takes me about three or four days to get them processed. But I will have those posted no later than tomorrow it's my goal before the weekend to get those done but there's a lot of questions that are answered when it comes to money management and anything else for that matter especially opening gap reversals which we get a lot of questions on or covered there but anyway 
So that's what the current portfolio looks like. And what I did last week was I took a snapshot going back one week to see how things have changed, good, bad, and and different. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to follow up on that. But this week, I wanted to show you the original position going in, in addition to that. So here's our move for the week. And this was the original position here. We bought AUI way back here. And then again, to the right, you can see this is what it did over the week, went up a little bit. And I reset the entry price to last week in the spreadsheet just to just to do the calculation for me. So if we go back one week, it was traded at 382. Yesterday, it closed at 388. And today, knock on wood, it's doing pretty good. It's up to four and change. And we'll get to that in just one second. But you can see, so if you add up all the shares and everything, it would be 86 times two. Let's take a look at TSCO. We had a sell short back here. Initially, as you can see, it didn't do so well. And it seems like the old adage, all shorts go against you, seems to be true, at least in my case, whenever I short anything. But if you look all the way to the right, you can see going back to yesterday, the stock actually went up and it's a short. So that was a loss for one week of $248. Remember in this particular position, the initial profit target was hit. So that's open profits that's being given up. And I'm gonna kind of harp on giving up open profits kind of bit, uh, quite a bit in a minute and your willingness to do so from a psychological perspective. As I often preach, you can't separate psychology or money management for that matter from the methodology. You have to really look at trading from a holistic perspective. You can't just look at one of these things in a vacuum because all three are intertwined. So PAGS was a sell short way back here in September. It triggered, didn't do a whole lot, but finally dropped nicely. And you can see that it sold off a little bit in our favor over the week. Looking over to the right side of the chart again. And by the way, if you find a broker that lets you trade off the left side of the chart, please let me know, as I often joke. <laughs> so you can see in this case, because we initially had on turn 50 shares, we took off 125 at the initial profit target, which leaves us with 125. And obviously in your own account, you would round that up or down to make it a little bit easier to manage. But based on this hypothetical portfolio, even though I've taken all of these trades, you have, except for one, and you have a $215 gain over the week. So continuing down the portfolio, take a look at PLMR. We had a buy back here. And over the last week, it had a little bit of a rally, better than the poke in the eye, I suppose. And that was good for 372 bucks. I was picking on one of you guys in the Facebook group for calling it a piece of manure. And it's like, oh, well, send me your profits, you know? <laughs> that's what I often say. And that's, that's kind of, I'm getting a little further ahead of myself, but that's kind of the, the thing you really have to look at is your net net over a period of time. It's like, did you make money on the trade? First of all, should you have taken the trade? If the answer is yes, because it was a good looking trade, it was trending, you had a nice little setup, something like this CMRE here. If you look back in time, that was a pretty much textbook type of trade, even for a shipper stock, which aren't all that trendy in nature. They tend to be a little choppy in nature, as I've said ad nauseum. I did a lot of mechanical testing many, many years ago, 20 years ago, and maybe 10 years ago, I dusted off everything and started doing a little mechanical testing just for S&Gs. And I discovered that shipping stocks and educational stocks don't trend that well. Kind of reminds me of back when I did all my commodity research. It seems like these trend following systems work pretty good in a lot of commodities, but you couldn't make them work, believe it or not, in the S&P futures because S&P futures, very efficient market hard to catch trends. Although lately it seems like you just get long and hold on. And I saw where Larry Williams in the, it's been a few weeks or a few months, I guess, since I looked at his, um, any of his presentations over on stock charts, but I noticed that he was long a 
shit ton of S&P futures, and I think he's still holding on, so congratulations to him. Anyway, you can see that our entry was here, and let's look at what happened over the last week. Ugh, well, that's pretty ugly, but at least partial profits were taken along the way, and you were just giving up open profits. I know, I know, I know. It still hurts, and you still tend to drop an F-bomb in these situations. And I'm more guilty than a lot of people when it comes to emotions. And I talk to some of you guys, and you're a lot more ice in the veins. And I'd love to get to that point. I'm getting better and better at it. And I just kind of force myself to do these things. Put the stop in, let the stop take me out, drop the F-bomb, move on. But it does take a while to get used to losing money. And that's kind of the underlying theme today is learning how to lose money to make money. So in this particular case, obviously we lost some money, but it was open profits. I know, I know, it's still money, right? And that constituted a $721 loss. Now keep in mind, that's over the week that we did make a little money on the trade. If you go back and look at the portfolio, which we'll take a look at, I think in a few minutes again, you can see that overall we did make money on the trade, but we did give up a hunk of that money in the end. Well, all trades eventually end badly. Here's the deal too. Now this one's following through the downside today, so it was probably a good idea we got out. But as I said in the Facebook group, many times I'll go in, a couple of days ago I said this, but many times I'll go in and look at stocks that we were long several years ago and notice that they've quadrupled since we've gotten stopped out. So very painful at the time to have that really wide stop, but if, you, if you're not willing to let that stop widen out, then you're never gonna capture these longer term trends. And unfortunately, this didn't turn into the mother of all longer term trends. In this particular case, I was hoping, I know you never say hope, but I was hoping it would go back to new highs, which would be an amazing trade. And we'll flesh some of these things out in just a minute. T and K, another one of these shipping stocks. And this pattern looks a little unorthodox, but if you squish your chart in a little bit, you'll see that this stock has made a pretty incredible run. It was a pretty big run before. September that happened. And this was the actual setup here, just a generic type of pullback, kind of longer term, sort of double top knockout looking. And you could see over the last week, it did sell off a little bit for a loss of 297. And that's per 100K. And again, we've taken partial profits on this. So that's just open profits. I know, I know. I'm making light of the fact that it's just open profits. KOD, our biggest winner of last year. Pretty much flats fill in a week, maybe up a smidge, but that was our buy recently there, day after Thanksgiving. This is what it did last week for a whopping $86 gain. We take a look at ping. Our buy was back here. Now this one, this one hit the initial profit target. So again, giving up open profits. And that's what it looks like over the last week. So that was a loss, an open loss of $426. So you can see it hasn't really been a good week, at least up until yesterday, right? From Wednesday to Wednesday before, the day before we do the weekend charts on Thursday. So let's take a look at a couple of more in here. We had a buy recently and BRBR initially failed miserably, but then last week, Wednesday to Wednesday, it did okay. And you can see we had a gain of $212 total on this. Hasn't quite hit that initial profit target just yet. And Q, well, we got a bunch of these, huh? You can see we had a buy here at this level. A little bit of a decent rally, but then came back in a little bit. And over the week, not counting today, which we'll talk about today's action and all these in just one second, you can see we we're down a little bit. So there's another $250 loss. And that's some of that's open profits. And some of it, now that we've dipped down below zero, is actually open losses too. So where does all this leave us? So what I did was I, I marked to market everything back, everything in the portfolio back one week and then put in the prices as of last night. So overall, we did have a couple of gains in here, as you can see, but overall we lost $635 per 100K. So that's obviously you're less wealthy. Now, what have I said recently? And I borrowed this line from Fortune's Formula, the book about the Kelly Formula which I would suggest you read, but tread really lightly if you decide to use a Kelly formula. I'm, I might do it in a like a 10K account or something for S&Gs, but just be prepared to blow your account up if you do that. I think Larry Williams actually used a Kelly formula, as I've said quite a bit, when he 
turn $10,000 into a million dollars one year trading S&P futures. He also was up $2 million at one point in a year. And he, if you ask him, he made a million dollars that year. And if you ask his wife, as he says, <laughs> it's a year that he lost a million dollars, but good for Larry. So here's the open portfolio. And the point I'm trying to make here is your ability to be less wealthy, your ability to ride these things out, good, bad, or indifferent, now, remember, it's always garbage in, garbage out, and not to get too far sidetracked. Imagine that, me get sidetracked. But one thing I've been thinking a lot about and writing a little bit about in my early morning morning pages and additional writings, which will find its way into these presentations eventually, is the, the pre-mortem process. How are you going to feel? First of all, if you're not feeling F, yeah, then, then pass. But if you're not really sure about it, Time travel in the future and think about how are you going to feel when you look at this trade after it's done. Now, that sounds a little silly, but it'll make a lot more sense after you get through a few repetition, repetitions of doing this type of introspection. By the way, while I'm off on a tangent, it's amazing that, that every day I come in and I try to get better and I work to get better and I recognize my mistakes and I always think, what could I have done better? And it's like you always... You never really feel super confident in this business. You're always thinking, what could I do better? How could I execute the process better? And it's a stark contrast, obviously, to the scumbags out there who probably have an ad at the beginning of this video. I'm probably gonna get demonetized, but I don't give a, I don't give a shit. <laughs> so I make 50 bucks, I don't care. That goes to charity, usually charity being my children anyway. <laughs> But they're bragging about, they're always bragging about how much they make. And, and I'm, I think I'm taking a, just the opposite approach. I'm showing you that you do lose money in the process, even when you're making money. And that's kind of the whole point of today's presentations and a lot of the recent, recent presentations I've been giving. So this snapshot was taken, the portfolio was up 18.8. And that's again, 100K. So about a 19% return on that 100K. Based on the open portfolio, there's obviously losses that were taken on some trades and there were some gains taken on some trades that are no longer in this portfolio, which would change that number. But this is the snapshot. And I'm often asked, like, well, Dave, why do you leave those trades in that have been closed out for half? And the reason is so you can get the entire picture of what happened on the trade. So let's say that CMRE would have stopped out for scratch or scratch. OK, let's say our stop would have been an eight or if the gap through it and we'd have made zero on that. Well, you could see that overall you made $1,000 on the trade. And obviously when the second part is still live, you wanna be able to see how much you have open. So as of tonight, just FYI, that CMRE will come out of the spreadsheet, okay? And then hopefully our next winner will be, will join its place or take its place. So anyway, your ability to be less wealthy, and it, it's hard, okay? It's hard to lose money, but your ability to be less wealthy will increase your chances of becoming wealthy. And it's like, you lose, you lose, you lose, you lose, you lose, bam, you make a lot of money. You lose, you lose, you lose, you lose, you lose, and then bam, you make a lot of money. And sometimes that money comes in a, in a small chunk in one position, and sometimes it comes in that, a small chunk in one position like this KOD, but also comes from a lot of mediocre gains or halfway decent gains, I should say, in quite a few positions because we've been in this little bull leg lately. This is us taking advantage of that, being trend following morons. Now at 1027 my time, 1127 Eastern, I thought it'd be kind of cool to do a snapshot of the portfolio and we are now more wealthy by $718. Now, a lot of that was climbing out of the hole. So the, the week over week, okay, or if you go back week over week plus one day, is now up $83. So we were down $600 per 100K. And we've come back $718 for a net of a whopping $83. But at least it moved back in the right direction. So... Luckily, and I hate to use the word luck, but luckily, at least for presentation purposes, it doesn't always come back, as you know. My wife, when I'm going to draw down, when are you going to draw down? I don't know. That's got to be weird for somebody to ask somebody who's been 30 years in a business <laughs> a simple question and they can't answer it. Uh, think about asking a doctor a question 
or a lawyer or automatic transmission mechanic with that much experience, they would have a much more definitive answer for you. But in this business, there are no definitive answers on a lot of these things. So you don't know. And if you did know, you would you would own the world. You would just plow all the rest of your money into your trading account and print some money. Anyway, by losing money, sometimes you're able to make money. But again, it's not just about losing. It's not just about withstanding the pain. If you get stopped, you got to take take your lumps. Okay, like one of you guys was joking this morning, CMRE. I guess today's program is going to be about taking your lumps, uh, taking your stops, honoring your stops. And yeah, we'll get to that when we get to the live charts. We'll take a peek at that and talk about why we did what we did. But if you're picking the best going in, not that I'm the grand poobah and I always pick the best of the best of the best stocks in the world, but I feel like I'm pretty good at it just because I've been doing it for a long, long, long time. And occasionally I do have losses. And sometimes those losses, when I go back and look at them, they were crappy stocks. And I think, what the hell was I thinking? Okay. And in other cases, as I often say, I look at it and say, you know what? It looked good to me. I would take that. I would take that same exact setup tomorrow. So you have to go through this process. And part of this process, part of this money management and good defense as I preach, is a good offense, and you want to pick the best stocks going in and then see it to fruition. Let yourself get stopped out if you're in a stinker of a position. Take those partial profits if you're offered. Trail that stop higher as offered, and just, as I'm going to mention in a minute, play the game. So let's talk about more on being more or less wealthy. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to show you some IPO trading that I'm doing outside of the core methodology. And as I said in the Facebook group and been telling my people over at Stock Charts TV, I'm not going to show you, or at least my goal is to not show you. I can't promise you that I'm gonna show you everything ahead of time, but I'm gonna make a hard, I'm gonna try hard, I should say, to make that happen. That's inspired by Dalio's principles, which I would suggest you read. Go to www.davelander.com slash books dash two dash read. And if you click on the link, I'll probably make 32 cents, which I appreciate. I'll put that back towards the website fees. Anyway, this is an IPO that I took recently. And I just wanted to point out that either through my trading service or through my Facebook group, never say never, but my goal is to never talk about a stock that I didn't mention ahead of time, okay? It's not to say that I don't occasionally take a trade and don't tell everyone, but what I've been trying to do more and more is show everything. That way you could see it unfold warts and all. And by the way, my in addition to my IPO list, my Landry list that I publish daily in the service is my actual call list. That's where I actually get my stocks from that I trade. So I said, an IPO just sprouted up on my screens. And I was kind of going through that middle masturbation at this time, but I thought it'd be fun to get my thoughts out on this as opposed to just saying SPT, buy, sell, whatever. And there were eight comments on this and we kind of picked it apart a little bit. And then some of you guys and girls played along. So remember, if we're trading a an IPO, at least a pioneer pattern, meaning early in the... IPO's life, it has to, for the breakout patterns, such as buy at B and the five-day SMA <laughs> Landry light pattern, we need to come up with a name for that. Mike had given me, Mike, are you here today? Mike Peterson had given me a good name for it, but I already forgotten what he said. Anyway, so you can see that based on that pattern, you have to close at a new high, but that close, that new closing high also has to be above the day one high. And that's because a lot of euphoria happens with IPOs, but sometimes that high often becomes the all-time high. And just waiting a week, you might want to write this down, just waiting a week will often keep you out of a lot of trouble when trading IPOs. Because a lot of these things, as I often say, just come public and tank. And that's okay, but no capital is put in harm's way. So anyway, we had Landry Light, meaning the low is greater than the moving average, and we closed at a new closing high. So that created a buy on the close. And again, in the under the guise, I should say, of full disclosure and being transparent, I have an account that's pretty close to this 
pretty close to the model account size of, of 100K. And that's the one I use to show you these trades, just so you can see that these trades are actually being placed. By the way, I, geez, I don't want to go, it's high track, imagine that Negan's high track, but I have seen some of these people out there in a very disingenuous way They'll show you a trade where they make a lot of money on it, but what they don't tell you is in some cases, they have the complete opposite trade in another account and they show you the one that works. Now, I know I don't want to call names on anyone, but I know that there was one individual who's claiming to fame and he's still bragging about it out there. So I, I, you hear a lot of rumors in this business, but the rumor was the SEC was after him for a little uh, disingenuous action on that. The SEC has got to be too busy to follow up on all these guys, though, and that's probably why they're getting away with it. But anyway, long story on this before I digress, I want to show you enough to show you that I'm at least taking this position. I did take this position in more than one account. I can assure you I had many more shares than 1,000. But I just need to show you enough to show that it's it's being done, right? So there you go, 1,000 at 19.02. And of that, I sold out 500 at 21. So here's your buy here. And then half was sold here for roughly a thousand dollar profit. Now, let's take a look at what happened and pick this trade apart a little bit. So we get in a trade, and then two days later, we're more wealthy by one thousand one hundred and sixty dollars. Three days later, at the low, we're less wealthy by two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, and then a few days later, again, we banked half of those profits. So we're more wealthy by 2180 total. $990 of that has already been banked. So the rest of that is open profits. And you can see it's down a little bit today based on where it was yesterday. Same sort of action in VIR. And again, this is one we did talk about in the Facebook group. Somebody asked me when. If you do a search on the search bar, you can find these stocks that are mentioned and see when they're mentioned. Again, I don't want to mention anything in hindsight. I want to mention it before I actually get in. And you can see there's a thousand shares at 17.16, buying on the close on another one of these little IPO breakout patterns. The next day, at least at the high, I was more wealthy by 13.80. And then the following day, I was less wealthy by 11.60. And now we're getting back to becoming more wealthy. From the low, that's a 2460 swing back up to the high. Now today, it's not followed through just yet, but I am looking to take partial profits on this one at 19 for about two bucks, okay? And they did say, not that I watch the news, but every now and then I happen to notice some or I get some through osmosis. They're actually working on the coronavirus. I'm sure somebody else has already pointed this out, but I, I seem to get the coronavirus when I go to the beach or go to Mexico. So I hope they do find a cure for it. No, it's a horrible thing. And I shouldn't make I shouldn't make light of that. Okay, these are some leftover ruminations from last week, but I think it's worth restating and maybe elaborating a little bit on them. Try not to think about giving up open profits. And I know it's tough. It's like, don't think about elephants. I'll tell you this, I'll tell you flat out yesterday. I was looking at one account and I was up $3,000, okay? And I went to eat breakfast and I actually felt pretty good about breakfast. And of course I had to brag to my wife, yeah, you know, we're doing pretty good. You know, we're up this much here, this much there, you know? <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about Bill Clinton. <laughs> anyway, I get back to my office and everything is now tanked and I'm now losing money on the day. So it's hard not to watch that equity curve bounce around. And I know that, okay? It's like, don't think about elephants. The one point that I did make last week is that if you read The Way of the Turtle by Curtis Faith, and long story endless, I swore I would never read those silly turtle books, but Curtis Faith is pretty good. Larry McMillan recommended that I read it. And if Larry tells me to read a book, I'm gonna read a book. <laughs> It was actually pretty good, and I learned a lot from it. Not so much from a methodology standpoint, because that pure trend following in the way that they do it, that breakout trading, they were in the right place at the right time. Yeah, I can't take anything away from them because they they did it, but that pure trend following, especially in more efficient markets like commodities, can be a little tough. You need to have a more defined methodology. I think something like pullbacks and TKOs and 
picking your spots carefully and bow ties and on things of that nature are a much better way to trade and also taking partial profits in, in all this money management. Anyway, before I digress too far, Curtis Faye said that Richard Dennis treated losses to open profits differently. So if you were in a position and you were losing money and you should have gotten out of the position because your stop would have taken you out, he didn't get out, he wasn't very happy. But if you were in a position giving up open profits, which is part of the game, in order to be a trend follower, you're going to spend a lot of your time being less wealthy, as I've been preaching today, then he seemed to be okay with that. I know, I'm kind of being redundant here. And again, as I alluded to earlier, take a longer term approach. Where are you on a net net basis? I'm doing much better than I was several months ago. I think I'm doing not so good or not as good several going back several weeks, but longer term, I'm doing okay. And that's where you need to be. You can't look at the CMRE trade. And again, not that I'm, <laughs> I'm very emotional, if anything, extremely emotional. Not that I don't get upset about it, but longer term, I look at that and say, well, well, okay, just scratch that one off the list as another successful trade, a trade that put money into my account, as opposed to looking at the high and trying to mentally monetize to that. So where are you on a net, net basis? Are you gaining ground or are you losing ground? And again, as I'm beating a dead horse today, a lot of your time as a trend follower will be spent being less wealthy. That comes with the territory. If you are a pure trend follower, meaning that you're not taking partial profits and maybe you're trading breakouts or something like that, you're gonna have in, in commodities, let's say like the turtles did, you're gonna have just a wild and crazy equity curve. And it's gonna be, that's gonna be really hard to stomach. I think Curtis Faith was so successful back when he was a turtle because he didn't give a shit. And there's some interviews that he's given, I basically say so much, he didn't really care about the money. It was all a big game for him. And then uh, he subsequently blew up, but he explained that the fact that he didn't care, which caused him to blow up, which is the same reason which helped him to make a whole bunch of money. Now, don't go out there and blow up. Be prudent, prudent, prudent with your money management and follow the process and do all these things to stay in the game. The goal is not to make, ideally is to make as much money as fast as possible, but doing that using the Kelly formula or super duper leverage of some sort and seat of the pants trading, that'll work until it don't. So be careful you're doing that. Last week, this one, this whole slide's from last week, but this one in particular, Discretion on near misses can greatly improve performance. We had one that was a near miss. I did personally take profits there. I tell people to take profits if it's a near miss or setting up to be a near miss. If it just can't seem to hit that initial profit target, then by all means, take partial profits. The real money is not in the first loaf. The first loaf, the first half of the trade just keeps you in the game. It's nice. It's better than the poke in the eye, okay? But that keeps you in the game. The real money is in the second loaf. And that doesn't often materialize, but it materializes often enough to make it all worthwhile. And yes, it might take a year before you get that big winner that's going to pay for your whole year. And again, this is one of the things that I'm going to talk more and more about. I know I beat the dead horse on it, but I'm going to beat the dead horse even more. It's kind of like real estate, location, location, location. Well, with trading, trading done properly, I should say, is follow the process, follow the process, and follow the process. As I think I said a few times already, I was in every now and then I'll tool around these little Facebook groups just to see what people are saying. And one guy was pouring his heart out. I've been trading for a year and a half. I follow the system, but I lost money. Am I a loser? It's like, no, you're not a loser because you followed a system for a year and a half. You just need a better system. I know that sounds kind of silly, but Captain Obvious, right? That's the hard part is actually following the system. And I think that's the whole point I'm trying to make today is following the system means there's going to be pain. There will be blood. Now, some more random thoughts on all this. Keep trading accounts as trading accounts. You know, it's, what is it? The tricks are for kids. You know, have a trading account as a trading account. Okay. I was talking with someone yesterday and he didn't seem to get too upset about the ups and downs in his account. And I was very impressed. And he explained to me, he goes, well, Dave, all my basic needs are covered. My house is paid for. I got a little bit of income coming in. I'm good to go. This trading is just for capital, long-term capital growth. I'd like to maybe travel someday or 
or maybe you know semi-retire or whatever the case may be and use that trading capital for that but over the short to intermediate term or even longer than intermediate term foreseeable future i should say his trading account is for trading and with my methodology and trend funneling in general your money comes from capital growth there is i strongly believe unless you're in some fixed income investment producing a very low percentage there's no way to really generate income from the market well d what about selling options oh boy that'll work until it don't so that's a that's a whole another conversation there but thanks for asking so as this gentleman i was talking about a second ago have your living expenses elsewhere and i know it's tough i mean my wife every time i walk in the house it, there's always a, an expense yeah, you know it's like and then yesterday it could be a fun thing too like yesterday's like well, let's why don't we take a vacation we never go anywhere it's like okay you know <laughs> where do you want to go uh, i don't know dry how do you say it tutuga key west whatever it's like okay so it's like let's start looking at flights oh, okay <laughs> so before you know it, it's like all right, so where am I to pull that 10K or whatever from? And it's hard not to mentally monetize your trades. It's hard not to do those type of things. Now, this is not to say that, let's say you have a good windfall or have a really good week, a really good month, really good year. There's nothing wrong with taking some of that money out, okay? A small portion of that money, paying off maybe a a loan you have or something to improve your cash flow, make your life better, make your personal life better so you're not digging in that trading account so much, okay? Or go off and have some fun. So don't want to put myself in the pressure, but if I do have a windfall between now and whenever I take a little vacation, I'm going to say, you know what, I, I earned that money. I'm going to take half of it and, and put it into that vacation fund. But for the most part, you want to leave that trading account alone and let it grow. And if you do, if you do plan on taking money out for living expenses, just do that in big chunks at at some longer term time interval. Like if you're very, this is provided that you're very successful at what you're doing, then you take a hunk out once a year or whatever, and you live off that hunk, and then you try not to mentally monetize your trading account. The point I'm trying to make there is use your trading account for capital growth, not income, okay? You have to view it as a game when possible. I kind of poured my heart out to my first voice future broker 20 something years ago or whatever. And he's like, well, Dave, see it as a game, you know, see work to make the numbers get bigger. And so the game with me is like, how long can I hold on to this position? Uh, what's the tightest stop I can use, even though it's gonna hurt when I get stopped out, what's the tightest stop I can use and still ride out a big picture correction? kind of like that CMRE. It's like, ouch, okay, that hurt, but it's a game. And it, it, it that loose stop kept me in that stock for a long, long time. My loose stop in AUI kept me in AUI for a long time. Now we haven't hit the initial profit target yet, so maybe I'm a little too, a little premature and using that one as a great example. When I'm generally winning, it's fun. It is, it is like a game for me. But obviously, if I'm in a drawdown for an extended period, it does wear me too. So I'm not holier than now. Work to become clinically dispassionate. This quote, I love this quote from Larry Williams. To make money as a trader, you have to not care. As soon as you start caring, you have emotional attachment. It's counterintuitive. The more you care, the less you make. The more you're clinically dispassionate and less attached to your trades, the more you will make. It's really quite simple, but very hard to accept. Amen, my brother, from another mother. So you have to detach yourself from the market. All right, let's go ahead and open it up for individual stock picks. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Let me just shift gears and get my screens to share while I'm doing this. Okay, while we're waiting on picks, let's take a look at the overall market. And you know what we should do since we have a little time today, let's take a look at the open portfolio. <laughs> I'm looking at some of the names of my watch list. I gotta watch what I name them. <laughs> I forget that I share the screen. <laughs> Years ago when I did, I, I don't do it anymore, but when I did actual mentoring, one guy noticed that I had a file on my desktop called the fart file. And he's like, any guy that's got a file called the fart file is good enough. <laughs> I guess I could have gone both ways. Here's an AUI. You can see nice little breakout today, not quite to the initial profit target, but moving in that general direction on that. I probably should practice what I preach and take profits a little early on that when it was up around 410 or so. Unfortunately, I was 
you know, it cuts both ways. Usually staying busy keeps me out of a lot of trouble, keeps me from day trading. Yesterday, for instance, I really wanted to buy the SLXX. I had to first walk away, then second, I had to come in and do my stock charts TV show and get prepared for that, which was a mad dash to get it done. What's a, is it called the Parkinson's effect? No matter how much time you have, work experience to fit that time, I am, <laughs> I never can catch up. Anyway, so BRBR, BR, nice little rally today. Again, we were, you could see that the original entry back here, we've spent a lot of time being less wealthy in this one and so far so good. Now it's coming back nicely. The CMRA, CMRE was the debacle du jour yesterday. Now, even though that's kind of a crazy stop, let's back this stock out a little bit. So I'll stop us right around, I think, 850. This stock could easily sell off that hard and just be like the mother of all trend knockout moves and then turn around and go right back up. So although that was painful to give up that much, sometimes you have to be willing to lose money, as I've been preaching today, in order to make money. But as you can see, it continued to drop. So as someone in a group, I think John was pointing out, today's lesson is use stops. Yes, use stops. And you could see that at 850, you're thinking, boy, that's a lot to give up, but better than giving up another point on that, okay? So that'll come out of the portfolio. In fact, why don't we just remove it right now? And it's gone. Oops, I hope it is the right one. CUE, just kind of chop it around. Not much to get excited about there. Had a nice little rally at first, but then just chop it around. KOD, the mother of all winners, as we talked about, just kind of chopping around in here. The good news is a lot of times after these huge moves like this, stocks will come right back in, kind of like a bottle rocket type of pattern that we talked about before. But I'm encouraged by this one because it continues to just kind of hang in there. I wouldn't rush out and buy a new position, but hold on to what shares you have left in your old position. Pags down a smidge in here. Longer term, bigger picture, you can see a top remains in place. Take a look at that. And this is really a rarity. Usually we're not able to hold on to shorts that long because shorts tend to be kind of like really wide. What's Bill Dunn said? Bill Dunn once said, trend trading is like riding a bouncing Bronco. Well, shorting is really like riding a bouncing Bronco. But look at a weekly chart on this thing. This thing looks like it's in trouble. Sound like Tony Elvis. Look, look at that chart. <laughs> look at that chart. It's huge. <laughs> PGNY kind of hanging in there. This one, did this one hit the initial profit target? I forget. One of them was a near miss. I think it was PGNY was a near miss. And uh, full disclosure, I did take profits on that near miss. PING, nice little rally there has since pulled back, but just kind of hanging in there. It looks it looks kind of good. It looks almost worthy of a, a new brand new setup in and of itself. PLMR, this was one that like I said, somebody in a Facebook group was getting frustrated with. And, you know, truth be told, I get frustrated too. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this gap back here to sell off, that was a little frustrating, okay? But I just have to remind myself, practice what I preach. It's open profits. Deal with it. TNK, obviously, I wouldn't call it debacle du jour, but certainly not a pretty stock at all. That's another one of those honor your stops just in case situations. And finally, TSCO. Yeah, it kind of flats fell in here. Let's check the those IPOs I mentioned. VIR was initially taken off this morning on a coronavirus. Unfortunately, it didn't get to my initial profit target. So this is where you're going to see me drop an F-bomb in real time. See, I am emotional. <laughs> Let's take a look at Sprout. Sprout rallied yesterday to hit the initial profit target. And what happened today? Well, I had to give up quite a bit of those profits. But hey, day ain't over with yet. Maybe by the end of the day, it'll be back in black, right? I guess one thing I'm thinking of here is be careful not to make too many observations. And I try not to, but I'm often guilty of watching a screen. But the more observations you 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 take, since you're going to be most of the time less wealthy as a trend follower, right? You're going to make negative observations. And the downward spiral that could easily happen there is a negative emotion has twice the impact of a positive one. I mean, this morning, I'm in the black for the day. But I'm looking at these stocks that I'm losing money on today and it's pissing me off, okay? Overall, I should be happy if you're if you're looking, but David, I thought you said not to mentally monetize. Well, do as I say, not as I do, right? <laughs> of course, I, I, I occasionally look at that screen, right? I got a vacation to pay for, leave me alone. <laughs> anyway, but those, the negative observations will eventually grind you down. And that's part of the gambler's ruin, just FYI, is that they make a little money and they feel pretty good about gambling. Then they lose some money 
and then they feel really bad about that and then they lose again and eventually they lose 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 but that losing in order to make that losing make up for that losing you have to win twice as much as you lose from an emotional standpoint and they end up chasing that high and then there's there's a lot of neurology involved, which I'm just kind of scratching the surface on learning, but it has to do with the dopamine and all this other stuff. These, what do you call these chemicals, neurotransmitters and all. I don't want to go too far in that and show you how little I know, but I'm working on all that to understand. And by the way, if you understand the trading psychology, I could preach until I'm blue in the face about that. And it's hard for some of you to wrap your head around that because all of us have a little bit different psychology. But for the most part, we all seem to have a shared psychology when it comes to trading. And if we can get past those hurdles, that's a big part of our, our success. Not the only part. Again, you have to take trading holistically. You need a methodology and also some money management. But the thing about the physiology, the neurology is we all have a shared neurology, okay? And our brains all work the same way. And learning how your brain works and how your brain, more importantly, how your brain works against you in trading is important. And you'll probably see a little bit more neurology from me in the future. Not that I haven't completely skipped over in the past. We talked quite a bit about it so far. But anyway, the S&P 500, look at this. Big blue arrow pointing higher. One thing in my random thoughts I'm kind of thinking is people say, you know, what about this automated trading, This these uh, flash traders? these so-called quants, et cetera. Well, to me, when you see a market with this much persistency, this kind of looks like a quant market where they're buying and selling and in and that buying and selling in the way it's done is propelling this market higher because rarely do you see such a gradual and orderly rising market. So maybe, just maybe some of that automated trading or flash trading is is helping to push this market higher. It's also it's also having a lot of people. It's putting a lot of FOMO into people, okay? And that FOMO, that fear of missing out, could create a parabolic move, okay? Could be any keyword in that sentence. We don't know for a fact. But when if this thing does go parabolic, just make sure you have a chair ready. Make sure you have a chair ready anyway. And obviously stops an individual issues will help you out. It's probably time that I update the TFM 10% system just to see where we are because it got long. Well, we could see where we are real quick. I think it got long back in March. Let's just grab a random day in March. So TFM system should be up about 18% and we'll update that next week or first chance we get. NASDAQ, same sort of thing there. Look at this beautiful persistency. This, this is kind of a rarity, especially in the overall market itself it just tends to go up day after day after day after day let's take a look at the rusty now the rusty is a little bit different and you know i'm just kind of seeing this as we talk maybe it's because there's not as much of that quant trading that's causing the russell to persist or not causing it to persist like the s p 500 and you know is it quant trading in the s p i don't know does it matter probably not Am I interviewing myself? Yes. I guess I need to watch because is it is it need to know or need to know? And I think it's need to know if it's the program trading doing that. But anyway, but Russell 2000 selling off a little bit, recovering today. Looking pretty good though. Not quite the brand new highs though. Remember I was complaining about this guy forever when I was stuck in his stupid range. Well, we finally gotten out of that range, but we got a little bit further to go to get the brand new highs. Yeah, keep the picks coming. We're getting ready to get those in just a few minutes. In fact, I'll just plow through a few things in here. It's interesting that the energies are beginning to implode in here. That might be what's taking the transport shippers. That's what's taking the shippers down, CMRE possibly, and the TNK. But energy's not looking so hot, so you might want to pull in your horns on the energies. Metals and mining getting whacked a little bit in here today. As you can see, let's take a look at gold and silver. Gold looking pretty good today. And maybe that's why AUY is doing so well. Silver doing okay, trying to rally out of a pullback in here. Let's take a look at gold, the commodity, GLD. You can see GLD beginning to rally out of a pullback. So that's looking pretty good in here. Now, as we go through these sectors, some of them are looking a little dubious, like the banks. Some of them have lost a little steam, like biotech. Okay, which has me a little concerned because I've got a lot of biotechs on in here. Drugs overall have begun to pull back a little bit into their prior little breakout. Not the end of the world for sure. Still in a nice, nice longer term uptrend, just having a little corrective action. Now, here's the thing. 
if the overall market doing as well as as it's doing, if the overall the overall market will correct sooner or later, that I can guarantee. Okay, and it's probably going to be fairly ugly, and even a fairly ugly correction because it's going up so high would actually be healthy and wouldn't mean the end of the road. But what I'm hoping for, I know, hope in one hand and <laughs> anyway, what I'm hoping for is that we maybe see a bit of a rolling correction. So maybe drugs and biotech pull back for a little while and then begin to take off. And then maybe the transports pull back for a little while and then begin to take off and in all these other sectors in here. And that's going to possibly create some ebb and flow type of opportunities, a little sector rotation, which would be fine with me. Kind of a rolling correction, if you will. Health service is looking pretty good, pulling back a little bit today, but boy, look at that nice little uptrend there. The list goes on and on. Retail has been a little choppy lately, but in general, kind of hanging in there. Technology has been doing phenomenally well. Apple, otherwise known as, or computer hardware, I should say, otherwise known as Apple. <laughs> JAPL. Continue to do pretty good. You can see it's kind of a mirror image of the sector itself. Now, see, this kind of smells of that flash trading or quant trading or whatever. Notice that it just goes up day after day after day after day after day. Kind of interesting what's happening there. You know, I love this flash trading until I don't. I love it when it does this to a stock or an overall market, okay? But when it eventually ends badly, I, I don't like that very much. Electronics, AKA semiconductors, down a smidge today, but boy, in a really nice uptrend as of late. By the way, before I forget, one thing that you might wanna do is take a look at like the spiders. If we come in and there's a big gap down, it could be worthwhile playing because right now I think there's a big FOMO in the market. And I think a lot of people who are trapped outside of the market What's the old adage? Bull markets don't let you in. Bear markets don't let you out. Well, I think we're in a bull market now that's not letting you in. Everybody's waiting for that correction. Not that you want to buy it blindly, but if for day trade, I think it could be the mother of all opening gap reversal trades. Now, if that FOMO happens overnight, based on some news event or some excitement or whatever, where you come in and the futures are up 50 points or whatever, 100 points, <laughs> something crazy, that might be an intraday shorting opportunity for a nice little day trade. So I know everybody here knows those patterns, the yoga patterns, keep an eye out for those type of things. I'd much prefer if we had a big gap down followed by a vacuum back right back up. That would be the type of trade. Let's take a look at bonds. It's kind of interesting. Bonds have been rallying as of late. Maybe that's what's pushing areas like real estate higher, which was sort of rolling over not that long ago. Not that the, there's many, opportunities in real estate, but it is good to look at all of these sectors and look at all these pieces of the puzzle when you're putting together your analysis. But bonds, which I've been saying forever, look like a big picture top, they're beginning to improve. It might still be a top, but shorter term, obviously, they're beginning to improve quite a bit. All right, let's take a look at some of these stocks. PAAS, a few too many days and the pullback perhaps still looks good. You still do the Landry 100. I forgot exactly what it was called, but you said it was like a paper trade portfolio. Okay, let's take a look at pause and then I'll talk about the Landry 100. If it were anything other than a commodity stock, I might begin to question the number of days in the pullback, but for the most part, good eye, Zach. This looks pretty good. This is one that's been showing up quite a bit in my scans. And you could see that you've got a really nice trend. This is a really good trend for a commodity related stock. Usually you don't see them this good. So yeah, if you don't have any exposure to silver, maybe an entry above this high here, but that's a good uh, that's a good call on that one. I think that looks pretty good. The Landry 100, okay. Landry 100, for those who don't know, was a momentum list that I kept just for S and Gs. And my rules were that the stock had to make a new high, ideally on an expansion of range, and it also had to be a fairly volatile stock. And what I would do, I took a hypothetical million dollar portfolio and I put 100 stocks money-wise investing, so to speak, 10,000 in each one. It was a wonderful experience and I learned a lot from it. It's just, it was too much to keep up with. I did have one institution that was actually interested in it for a little while. 
and I'm not sure that they could have lived with the volatility. He was looking for to do something different. I think he just went back to do doing whatever he did. Uh, he couldn't stomach the volatility. I think that was part of the problem. What I learned was, it's something I already knew, but I think it, it helped to reconfirm it, is that momentum gets hit hard and gets hit first. So if you've been trading for more than a little while and you have a portfolio of these wild and crazy big day momentum stocks and you're loving life because you're printing money in a market like this and then all of a sudden you get whacked really hard and you're like, what the hell happened? The market was up a quarter percent today and I just got whacked. Well, that's momentum. Sometimes momentum gets hit first and then the overall market follows. And it always scares me a little bit when that happens to my portfolio. It scares me when I lose money anyway, but it always scares me when that happens. And if you follow along with the service, you'll notice or look at the archives if you want, DaveLander.com slash archives, if you want to take a look at those. And I'll update them soon. I think they have the beginning of January in there. It's certainly the end of December from last year. Anyway, the thing I learned in that f tracking that momentum list is that that momentum list would get creamed. And the overall market was doing pretty good. And after seeing that happen a few times, I realized that, wait a minute, this thing gets creamed usually two to three days before the overall market gets hit pretty hard. So if I had a staff here, I probably would put somebody on the Landry 100 and wouldn't be a full-time job, but spend a lot of time working on that. And I think the payoff would be A, you know, do it as a real portfolio because it did print money, but also do it to get a feel for what's happening in the overall market and look to short the market when that list begins to get hit hard. Now, I say that it printed money, but it also got whacked at times. It was also hard at times to find momentum. So you couldn't, you'd end up with less than 100 stocks. And that's where I started to create slots of cash, okay? So let's think of 100 slots, 10 grand in each slot. Well, if I can't find up to 100 stocks, then I have to, let's say I can only find 98, then there's 98 stocks in the portfolio and two empty slots. And it might have as many as 30 or 40 or 50 empty slots. In other words, it wouldn't be fully invested. And I think that's how you would have to trade momentum if you look at some of these, like a mutual fund or something has a specific charter where they have to always be fully invested, you'll notice that they get absolutely creamed at times because they're always fully invested. Anyway, getting back to the list itself, in really, really good times, what was kind of cool was I actually had to kick out stocks that were still doing well to replace them with stocks that were doing much, much, much better with new candidates. And and again, it was a really fun exercise. If somebody really wanted to work hard and and manage a list, I think I was using Telechart. Used to have a program called Stock Finder. I don't I don't know if they still have it, but it was it actually worked out pretty good for managing this list. But yeah, so that's the that's the story. Sorry, you asked uh, of the Landry 100. But I no longer publish it, and I no longer follow up with it just because it was a lot of work. I feel like it served its purpose. And it just too much time and effort to go into it. But it, again, something that I really like doing. It was fun to do. So, all right, let's take a look at, uh, boy, a lot of stocks coming in. Sorry, I'm digressing here. Donald wants to look at SDC. Let's see. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. I had this one on the Landry list. If you back the chart out a few days, unfortunately, it didn't let us in. But you can see it won't do it. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. I like the way it kind of bottomed out in here and then making it take off. Let's take a look at the bow ties. And I think if we zoom in, but yeah, I think it's worth a shot as a second, a second entry on this thing possibly. But this is when I really liked it back here. It wasn't quite a bow tie yet, but it was bottoming out nicely. And if you look at these IPOs, and this is, I fell in love with IPOs in 2000. 14, I think, and that's when I did the course on them. And I just, I guess, I've always been in love with IPOs. But when I, when I, when I hit 2014, it's like it's time to do a course. It's, it was like it's been about 14 years since I've been really heavily in IPOs. I remember looking back to the 90s. I had, I was showing patterns in IPOs that I really liked. So I've always liked them. But then it's like it just really hit me. These things are phenomenal. And I was holding off because I was worried that the bull market would end. But boy, it's been, it's been fantastic. 
Now, what did I say earlier? You want to avoid that first day of trading. In fact, you want to avoid the first week of trading. You also want to not buy them until they go above the day one high, okay? At least early in the trade. But if they come down here and die out and form a cup and handle or a bow tie or something, then I think they're worth going after. So it, it, this is sort of a secondary setup, even though it's below what would be a pioneer setup. Let me just show you, let's just go back just one second to something like VIR or SPT. Let's take a look, SPT, I guess. So here you have a stock and your first breakout pattern would be obviously above the day one high. So this would be your entry on this day here, okay? Whereas something like the Smile Direct didn't give you that, didn't give you that Pioneer setup. So you just avoid it and you would avoid this stock having in value, okay? No capital is put in harm way. But sometimes three, four, five, maybe six months down the road or even longer, these things can be worthwhile trading, okay? So yeah, keep that on your minimum list. I don't think I would go after it at this juncture, maybe if it pulled back a little bit more, retested this little breakout just a little bit, but not too much. I think it'd be worth a shot. But yeah, definitely keep it on your momentum list. I have it on mine. You've got a good memory, Zach. Remember that I talked about the Landry 100. LK, that's going to be a Lucan, I think. Lucan. Yeah, this one's kind of interesting. I'd actually like to see a little bit more pullback to it, okay? But yeah, it looks pretty good. Maybe a tiny bit more pullback. You can certainly do much worse, okay? If you traded that stock, it has tremendous volume. Look at that. That's crazy. But yeah, nice little opening gap reversal this morning. If it was a little bit bigger, I think I would have gone after it. But I think it's that's a pretty good looking stock. A little bit deeper pullback I'd prefer, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all, Don. I'll give you a high five on that one. First high five of the day. Has a few too many days in the pullback. Yeah, it's, it looks good, Chris, though. It's okay. Apple for Don. Yeah, you know, it's just going up. Okay. Uh <laughs> this is when <laughs> this is when you probably just and I've talked to several people lately. They're, I'm just gonna buy a hundred shares of Apple, forget about it. It's like, yeah, okay. And that might work. <laughs> That'll work until it don't. But there's a lot of that mentality out there. And that uh that's the FOMO money. That's a Johnny come late lease, okay. And that's when it can get a little ugly. Um, if I were, Apple so thick, I generally don't trade it. I mean, it does move, okay? But look at the HV on it. It's only got an HV of 16. So it doesn't move quite as much as everybody thinks it does. But I'm not going to argue with it. It's a good looking stock. I mean, obviously, if it keeps moving like that. If that line, extend that line out by the end of the year, it would be a pretty good trade, right? But I would wait for a setup. Wait for the mother of all knockout moves. But what's kind of interesting about Apple is it's got that little pattern I was talking about where let's just kind of pick this apart. Every time it goes down a little, look at that little gap down, it goes right back up, down a little, right back up. Okay. Down one day, down another, end of the world there. Nope. Right back up, down a little, up a little, down a little. It's probably going to go right back up. Okay. Now, of course, as soon as you try to trade that, it's going to stop working. So what I would do is wait for, we had the mother of all opening gap reversals here. I'd be on, I'd be all over it. Okay. Maybe on a TKO type of move, but just to blindly buy it, I, I wouldn't suggest it. NVDA, another thick stock. This Don likes the thick stocks. We had our Dons are coming back. We had uh, Dons, then we had Chris's and John's, and now we're back to Don's. Well, much, much longer term, you have overhead supply. Even though that's a long ways away, 2018, I still would be concerned about that. So I would pass based on that. But yeah, you're certainly in trending stocks, which is a good thing. But maybe wait for a pullback. Opinion on BIOS for Mike. How you doing, Mike? Good to see you. Well, it looks good. It's certainly trending. Uh, it's not set up. It's up here in fresh air. It needs a pullback. The only problem is if it pulls back, it could, it needs a, a pullback, but if it pulls back, it's going to pull back too far into this trading range. So let me just take a step back and explain what I'm trying to say here. So if we take a look at this chart, if we give ourselves a little bit of room, let's see if it'll work on this computer. 
I don't know why it's not working. Let's see. Well, usually I can hit my plus key to get to. Yeah, this keyboard is one of these ergonomic keyboards. I don't know if it's let me do it, but anyway, I would prefer to see it break up, break out further past its recent highs. Okay, up here and then pull back. So it's it's too early in the breakout. So see if it follows through and then pulls back. Longer term, the stock is kind of all over the place. There might be something that trades a little bit more cleanly if you dig through your database in biotech that might be worth going after, okay? But yeah, by all means, keep it on your keep it on your watch list. Don ask about shorts. Let me kick Don out, okay? All right, Don's being kicked out. Let me kick Don. Let me figure out how do I kick people out? Got to kick Don out because he asked about a non trending wide and loose stop. We are trend traders. Now see he was doing really good. He he asked about two he asked about two stocks that were trending. Make sure I don't kick the wrong Don out. <laughs> All right, let's see how do we kick him out? It's been so long. That's good. He, you've been dismissed, John. Don. Yep. Goodbye. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about Don since we kicked him out. This stock is electrocardiogram. Beep, 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 beep. So what are we gonna do with it? Nothing. <laughs> I think Don's the only person I kick out of these things. He was doing so good. He was asked, he asked about Apple, which was trending. He asked about NVIDIA, had a little oversupply, but it was trending. And then he asked about Ford. We had to kick him out. Sorry about that. He doesn't learn though. It's kind of like the, what's the joke about the guy goes hunting in the woods and the gorilla, not the gorilla. Well, it could be a gorilla. <laughs> gorilla has his way with him, you know, and then a few days later, the guy goes hunting in the woods. The gorilla taps him on the shoulder, has his way with him, you know, and then third or fourth day, the gorilla taps on the shoulder and says, you're not out here for the hunting, are you? <laughs> I'm sure I missed a few points in that uh, joke. Yeah, this looks pretty interesting. Fiverr has improved for sure. Um, it's not set up just yet. I'd like to see a little bit more trend maybe in it, but it's okay. And let's just see how it shakes out. This is another one of those ones. What did I just say? Don't buy them for at least five days. One, two, day two, you made your high. And then what happened? You went from 40 bucks down to what? Let's see. It's gonna be hard to get a true measurement on this, but close enough for government work. Yeah, it lost over half of its value, but now it's kind of getting, getting its act together. And we talked a lot about that in the IPO course that sometimes they come public too early or the underwriter screws up, brings the public too high, price too high, they're going to die. Sometimes the conditions change, they begin to improve. Now, longer term, this stock has some issues, but let's zoom in a little bit. Shorter term, it looks okay. It's kind of wide and loose, and now it's beginning to get its act together. I'd say it's okay. It's not phenomenal, but it's okay, especially if you if you back the chart out a little bit here and you can see you have the mother of all bottoms it's rallying off the lows so that's not bad and that's the that's the smart donald not that the other donald's stupid but he's just not a trend follower we're trying to keep the trend following mnk for chris one of the chris is that cj or another chris well we do have a little gap back here but that's a little ways away that would bother me a little bit i, I tend to look for perfection quite a bit so i probably would pass based on that but let's zoom in a little bit you know this thing is really taken off nicely so it's going to have to have a pretty deep correction for me to get excited and if it does it might be worth a shot but again i would probably personally pass because of this gap here i know if it made it all the way to the gap you'd be so happy but i think i'm going to pass based on that don came back <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he keeps coming back. So he's obviously he's obviously not here for the uh, <laughs> for the hunting. All right, Don's back. I'm a trend trader, and F is in a downtrend. Look at his shorted. Ah, all right. I guess I gotta ki stop kicking you out. I'm still gonna say no, but I'm not gonna kick you out again. Um, it's just all over the place, Don. Beep beep beep. I know you love this stock. 
And I know it's different. You know, people people ask me, Ford, does Don really exist, or you just like to make fun of Ford? <laughs> it's like, no, no. It's, Don just loves this stock for some reason. Yeah, I mean, if you put a gun to my head, which my wife hates when I say that, I guess given the business that I'm in, all the ups and downs, right? But put a gun to my head, if I had to go long or short, I'd go short. But it's all over the place. There's so many better stocks. If you go back, what's like one of those? Oh, is it Pags? Or, you know, these are, these are a little choppy, not necessarily perfect examples. But if you go back in time and look at these stocks, and, and I'd recommend you do that, okay? But something like, let's say, PAGS back here or tractor supply, whatever the case may be, you had a, a bow tie down, okay? And you had a nice thrust lower, and then you had, it begins to pull back. Just something a little bit more cleanly. I know it's not the best example in the world, but it's certainly a lot more cleaner than the Ford stock. So I hear you though. All right, I'll give you a pass today. But even, even though you're looking to short it, it is pretty choppy and it looks like electrocardiogram. Now, you new people probably think, oh, he's gonna kick me out. No, 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 don't worry about that. You'll, I'll give plenty of chances, okay? And I also, if you're going to, if you're going to trend trade, then by all means, trend trade. But while you're learning, hey, you know what? You, you're gonna have to go through a few crappy stocks in order to learn, and, and that's, that's acceptable. M and K, yeah, we talked about that one. Okay, any more? While we're at impasse, obviously I want to thank everybody for coming today. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Going once, going twice. Okay, for you guys that are members, I'll see you in a few minutes in the Facebook group. For everybody else, I hope to see you again next week. Thank you so much. Everybody enjoy your weekend. If we don't talk between now and then. Thank you so much.